Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Issue 3 of Kevin Scott's High Republic comic series recently dropped and things got wild. It was another fun issue that left me excited for the next installment, so let's discuss what issue 3 had in store for Star Wars fans and dive into some of my thoughts and feelings on the comic. Picking up where we left off in issue 2, we return to Cedri Minor. Jedi Master Skier and Avar Chris are aboard the Ataraxia, attempting to restrain Jedi Knight Terek as our homegirl Keeve Trennis waits outside of the starship. Sarah has still not been found and Tarek seems to be plagued by some sort of malevolent force, the same force that has abducted Sarit since the two are Bond twins. Skier starts to lose it again and slams Tarek down to try to stop the Jedi from continuing to speak nonsense. Meanwhile, some locals soon arrive, offer the Jedi food, and tell Keeve that others amongst their community have also disappeared recently, that the community's crops are failing, and that the planet might be cursed. An individual named Cal Sulman then arrives, who claims to speak on behalf of the community and lets the Jedi know they're not welcome on Sedri Minor. Keeve then decides to take it upon herself to try to search for answers, and one of the boys from earlier sneaks up on her before the two begin their search together. They then come upon a sinkhole, and the young boy named Bartol launches his ass down that sinkhole, so Keeve has to follow suit and keep the boy from plummeting to his demise. Back on the Ataraxia, Tarek has passed out, and Skier takes the opportunity to apologize to Avar Chris for being unable to detect the dark side on Sedri Minor, and for what he did to the Nile last issue when he chopped that dude into smithereens. Estalamaru interrupts the two and informs Avar Chris that Grandmaster Laru was perturbed by her request to have an autopsy conducted on the murdered hut that was found in the previous issue, and it appears that Avar was hoping the Jedi Council wouldn't have discovered her request. She then tells Skier to watch over Tarek and heads out to search for Keeve after Cal Salman barged in, told them the Jedi were not welcome on Sedri Minor, and that Keeve has also disappeared. We then return to our homegirl Keeve Trennis and see that the dark side is beginning to physically affect her and that she also hears it calling out to her. She and Bartol then discover the bodies of Sarit and a young Rodian, both of whom are wrapped in vines that appear to have lodged themselves into both individuals. As Sarit warns Keeve to be aware, the evil Drengear appears and starts calling Keeve meat, which, damn son. While this is happening, Tarek awakens on the Ataraxia and spits some sort of black vapor or spores into Skier's face and it appears that Tarek has become fully infected by the Drengear and the Dark Side. Cutting back to Keeve, the Jedi tries to fight off the Drengear, but Seret, who's also become fully consumed by the Dark Side, distracts her as he has captured Bartol, allowing the Drengear to advance on her. Avar Chris soon arrives, crashing through the ceiling of the cavern they're in, slicing the Drengear in half. Avar tries to talk sense into Seret, who appears to have fought off the hold the Drengear had on him, at least for a moment. However, Avar and the Jedi soon discover that the Drengear was merely split in two, healing the damage that had been done, and two Drengear now stood before them. To make matters worse, Skier arrives along with another Drengear, and he's consumed by the dark side and the Drengear. Our homeboy's missing arm has even grown back in the form of vegetation, and that's where the issue ends. Gotta say, when the Drengear were initially announced, I was a little skeptical if they'd be a worthy adversary for the Jedi, as they were described as sentient plants. However, based on what this issue revealed, along with what was in Into the Dark, it's clear why the Drengear are such a formidable foe. Before we go any further, I'm going to discuss some spoilers for Into the Dark, so turn back now if you don't want any spoilers for that book. In Into the Dark, several Jedi and others are stranded on an Amaxine station following the Great Disaster. At one point, it's revealed that the Sith placed dark side idols in the station, which the Drengear had once infested, so these creatures even scared the dang Sith. The station was strong in the dark side, and once the Drengear were let loose, it's revealed that all they want to do is consume and destroy. Going back to the High Republic comic, we can see that the Drengear have the ability to infect beings, and those infected beings are able to infect others, which allows the Drengear to get those infected beings to do their bidding. Kinda like body snatchers. On top of that, chopping the Drengear in half or even trying to slice them up with lightsabers doesn't work against them. In Into the Dark, the Jedi had to utilize helix rings to vaporize these sons of bitches. 
rings. Helix rings were these powerful energy boosters that held the equivalent of enough pure coaxium to fuel 40 to 50 starships so we can see that it takes a hell of a lot to destroy the Drengear. I'm curious to see how this is all going to play out and what the Jedi are going to do to fight against the Drengear so we'll have to see what the next issue has in store for us. But what did you guys think about issue 3 of the High Republic and what do you think will happen next issue? Let us know down in the comments. If you like this video please help out the channel by hitting that like button and making sure you subscribe. Follow the channel on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.